I've gotten a comment asking how to import characters into Source 2 Filmmaker. This is something I struggle to figure out as well, and the solution isn't very obvious. This tutorial will show you how to import the characters, fix them up, and rig and pose them. Now, let's not waste any time and get right into the prerequisites. I'm usually a Linux guy, but I recommend Windows since support for Linux is spotty in Source 2 Filmmaker. You'll also need to install the workshop tools, which includes SFM and everything else you'll need. Before we move on, I'm going to warn you that 16 gigabytes of RAM it's probably not enough. You can continue if you want, but you probably won't have the smoothest experience. The reason is because the game Counter-Strike 2 runs in the background and the tools themselves also take up quite a bit of RAM. Launch the CS2 workshop tools and either open a previous add-on that has custom maps and content you made, or if you don't have any add-ons or want a fresh start, then make a new one. Press launch tools and wait for the game to start and the asset browser to appear. In the asset browser, if you search for player models or guns, such as the Phoenix and SAS models or the Glock model, none of the actual models will appear. This would be a dead end if there wasn't a way around it. Luckily, there is. Go ahead and close the asset browser and stop the process from Steam. Browse Counter-Strike 2's local files, go to Game, CSGO, and look for the GameInfo.gi file. Create a backup of this file, and then open the original with your favorite text editor. There's a warning telling you not to edit this file, just ignore that and trust me instead. I'm a trustable guy. Scroll down to the very bottom and look under the Asset Browser section. There are filters that block out certain folders from the Asset Browser, including character and gun models. That's why you can't see them or import them into SFM. Why did Valve do this? I have no idea. To include these excluded folders, go under VPK directories and create seven new lines, each starting with include and following the format of the entries above. In K, the text editor I'm using, if you press Ctrl Shift B, you can select a block of text. If you're using Notepad++, hold down Alt and then select. If you're using a normal notepad or something else, just copy each individual line down. Copy only the entries that are filtered and paste them under the VPK directories. Now delete the filters and save this file. It should look identical to this when you're done. Editing this file will not allow you to join online games. To fix it, replace the GameInfo.gi with the backup from earlier, or verify your game files through Steam. Launch your workshop tools again and select your add-on, then launch tools. Once the asset browser opens, you'll notice some new entries. If you try searching for models, they should actually appear this time. Now launch SFM by clicking the SFM button. If you don't have an SFM button, click tools at the top and launch SFM from there. Once SFM opens, you'll be prompted to create or open a session. I'll make a new one. I'm just going to leave it at 24 FPS because I don't plan to animate anything, just posing. I recommend leaving the directory as is because I don't think it works outside of your CS2 add-on directory. First thing after it's open is picking a map to load. You can do this by right clicking the viewport and clicking set session map. Search for whichever map you want. I'll pick nuke because it's my favorite. Give it a moment to load. Once you're in, you can move around by holding down right click on the viewport and then using WASD to move. Hold down shift to go faster and scroll to change the FOV. Go to a position you want to create your character in and look a bit above the ground so your character doesn't end up under the ground. Make sure you're on the animation set editor tab and press the add button. Then create animation set for new model. Search for the model you want. I'll use the default T character, which is named Phoenix. Some of the characters are supposed to have eyes, but the eyes don't actually show up. Just a white void to stare into and get lost in. Luckily, there's a way to give them eyes. You can skip this part of exporting the eye models because someone else already got them all in one place for your convenience. I just want to document how to get them yourself. I'll put a timestamp on screen that you can skip to if you just want to know how to download and import the eyes and don't care how to export them yourself. I'll also put up a timestamp if your character doesn't have eyes and you don't need to know how to add eyes to a character. For anyone interested in exporting the eye models yourself, Follow along here. You will need to have a replay locally downloaded where you played with someone using the character you need. In my case, the default T character, which isn't hard to come by. If you don't have a replay, I recommend skipping to the other method where someone already gathered them all for you to download. I have a replay from a premiere match I downloaded that I can use. I believe you can record a demo with bots or other matchmaking with console commands, but every time I've tried to replay those demos, it crashed with an error. The problem could just be specific to me though. Now, save and close your current session in SFM and create a new one and set the session map to the same one from the replay. In my case, it's also nuke. Now, press the record button and select your replay from the dropdown. Uncheck lights because it just duplicates all the lights in the map and makes the lighting really harsh. And 
uncheck the three boxes below since we want to record everything, not just what's in the view of the camera. Hit record and if you switch to your game window it should be loading into the replay. Make sure you're not recording from the perspective of the character you wish to grab the eye models from. Let it record for a few seconds and then stop recording from the same button that started it. Switch to the work camera by pressing the camera button towards the bottom right of the viewport, fly over to the character you're looking for, and make sure you have the element viewer tab selected, and then click the character in the viewport. In the element viewer tab, you should see a material override in the hierarchy. Right click it and hit export element. Give it a fitting name and save it somewhere you'll remember. Now switch back to the default camera and close this session and open the one you made earlier. Now I'll show you how you can download the eye models someone else exported and apply them to your character. I'll leave a link in the description that leads to a Google Drive folder containing all the eye models. These were packaged by someone known as Hoxnolum on twitx.com. Either download all of them or just the ones you'll need. They're named according to the character they're meant for. The one I want is default underscore phoenix underscore i underscore values dot dmx. As of now this is the only one I've personally tested but have no reason to believe the others don't work. Once you've downloaded it, go back into SFM and make sure you're in the animation set editor tab. Right click your character, hover utilities, click add material overrides to the model. Switch to the element viewer tab and select your character in the viewport if it isn't already selected. Right click material override in the hierarchy and import element. Click your eyes dmx file you downloaded to apply it. Now my character has beautiful blue eyes. Time to set up the rest of the character and go over the different things you can do with it. Switch over to the Animation Set Editor tab and change the timeline to the Graph Editor so you can see and edit the bones of your character. Note the movement and rotation modes you can switch to underneath the viewport. The pelvis is the root transform bone, so moving it around means you move the entire character. I'll move it so his feet are on the ground. You can attach rigs to your character to make it easier to move them around more realistically, or if you just want a lot more precision, just don't add them. Before I attach a rig, I'm going to connect the Glock to my character's hand. So I'll just create the Glock model and select only the root transform to move it into a convincing position. I'll start rotating the finger bones around the gun. It's hard to make the fingers look good, and it also takes a while. Attaching the gun to the hand is like super glue. It'll move around following the hand so you don't have to move both. Select the gun's root transform and then shift click the hand bone. In the animation set editor tab, right click your hand bone in the hierarchy and create a parent constraint. Now if you rotate your hand, the gun moves with it. I also want to attach a knife to my character before I attach the rig. You can pick any knife you want, including kitchenware if you really want. I'm going to pick the Counter-Strike Source Knife. If you pay attention to small details during the games, you'll notice that the characters keep their knife on the side of their leg. I'll move my knife and attach it the same way as the Glock, but this time to the leg bone instead. I'll show you how to attach the rig now. In the Animation Set Editor, right-click your character and hover rig, then auto-attach rigs. You'll notice some of the bones have disappeared in the arms and legs. This is why we attach the gun and knife first. You can't attach them to certain bones after the rig is attached. Don't worry, if you ever need to modify the positions or rotations of your gun, knife, or other attach models, you can also remove the rig later, make your modifications, then reattach it. As you can see, moving the ankle bone around moves the entire leg in a realistic way. You can do the same thing with the hands too, and it looks like I didn't do a great job of positioning the gun and fingers. Some of the bones like the spine, neck, and fingers don't have the same type of rig and must be rotated individually. The hands and ankles will also try to stay where they are, so moving the root transform doesn't move the hands and ankles with it anymore. Just select the hands and ankles holding shift, then finally select the pelvis. Then start moving your character around. Moving around the poles can rotate the arms and legs for more control, and I should probably fix up that gun position before going any further now. You can detach the rig from the same menu as attaching it. I'll detach the gun from the hand the same way I detached the rig from the character. After finishing modifications, create a parent constraint again to reattach it to the hand. Add a rig to the character again, and it still doesn't look great, but it's good enough for me. I'll just finish posing my character, and I'm doing this without a reference, so that's why it looks a little weird. References are the key for good animations and poses. Find a reference online or take a picture of yourself doing that pose to copy. Let's look into configuring those fancy eyes from earlier. Again, you can skip this part if your character doesn't have eyes. Making sure you're in the animation set editor tab. Expand your character and expand the unknown category. This will contain the eye poses. The ones you want are the eye underscore look down, eye underscore look up, and eye underscore blink. On the right side of the animation set editor tab, there will be a bar you can move around to accordingly move the eyes. If done properly with the craft editor, you can make a realistic blinking animation. You probably want to move the actual eyeballs too. Further away in front of the character will be an eye target bone. Your character's eyes will follow this bone around, so place it wherever you want your character to be looking. You might want more precise control over the eyeballs. There's a bone right on the eyes that you can rotate around to move them individually. I think that's everything I have to share with you. Of course, if you have questions, just leave a comment and I'll get back to you with either an answer, or if it's too difficult to explain with text, a new video. I'm just going to position the camera real quick and export a poster so I can have an image of this pose. I hope I was able to help you in your SFM journey.